Welcome back everyone to the Squared Circle, Andy the King of Wrestling Trivia, joined here of course by Lee, and we're joined now by the one and only, the legend, former Smackdown diva, Lauren Jones. Welcome to the Squared Circle. Thank you very much, thanks for having me. That's our pleasure. Um, okay, we're going to go right the way we need to go on. Um, how did you first get into uh, modelling? Um, I first got into modelling when I was about 17. Um, I was still in high school and there was a modelling contest in uh, New York on Long Island and it was for Seventeen Magazine. And um, I started out, I was one of like 15 girls that had won this preliminary round and um, I had no clue it would have taken off from there and ended up winning the national competition that I was automatically entered in after that first round. And I won that, and I was on the Regis and Kathy Lee show when, you know, Kathy Lee was still there. And um, that sort of led to this domino effect, and that's how it started. Fantastic. And you've actually also earned the title New York City's Most Requested Bikini Babe. How did, how did that come about? You know what? That just sort of came out of nowhere. Um, I always sort of anticipated doing, you know, traditional modeling like hair and beauty and clothes and things like that. And um, I did one bikini shoot, and then all of a sudden, over the internet, just sort of spread like wildfire. And um, then these casting directors in New York were calling me um, the go-to girl for bikini modeling because basically people would come to New York, of course, to cast for commercials and bikini clothes and everything, and they would call me um, because they always they said that I was always bikini ready, so meaning I was always tan and always always working out and always ready to shoot. So I guess that's how that came about. <laughs> awesome. Uh, moving on to uh, to the wrestling field, how did you first become interested in uh, professional wrestling? And um, did you watch it when you were young? I actually saw the cover of SmackDown magazine, and that was the beginning. Um, it was my twenty first or twenty second birthday. I can't remember. <laughs> and um, I was just on the cover of SmackDown with Paul, the Big Show, who I'm sure everybody is familiar with. Yeah. And um, it was there that I met all of the head of talent development, and they they really we got along together and they were really interested in having me come on the road and try to audition and see if I could pick up the sport and and gain a knowledge for it and learn how to wrestle and I thought that was a phenomenal idea and I said yes let's go and um, I automatically was put on the road and I worked with um, Rene Dupree who's a French wrestler when he was there and uh, Hiroko who's a Japanese wrestler and um, they taught me and they put me in the ring right away and it was crazy I, I just started learning and then I was just put on TV so it was just kind of kind of fell into my lap actually but I took a hold of it and, and made sure that it went further than just the modeling you know I really wanted it to be more of a wrestling career did you watch any of the products when you were younger oh yeah definitely all the time I loved it who were your, your favorites when you when you watched it when you were younger my favorite has always been Hulk Hogan I think it's because he's sort of so vibrant in his colors and his theme song I don't know like you couldn't help but get excited when you watched him come out of you know come into the ring and stuff and he always just fought so hard and, and took his character to the maximum. It was so fun. I loved watching him. So he was definitely one of my favorites. Fantastic. Obviously, once you, um, as you mentioned, there, you started training to to actually compete in the ring um, after you, you signed with WWE. How yeah. did um, obviously coming from a, a career in modelling, um, training to be a wrestler is is a quite a different field, and uh, you you do have quite an athletic background. But how did um, how did the, the training affect you? You know what. Um, the training in wrestling is a lot like dancing. If you can imagine having a partner and learning, um, you know, like a choreographed routine, you're basically learning and memorizing and practicing uh, certain moves. And once you have practiced those moves enough times, it's kind of like a dance or any other sport that, or like gymnastics. You, you practice it so many times, it becomes embedded in your brain and it's natural to you. So then when you go back in the, in the ring and you're working with another partner in wrestling, it's just, it, it kind of comes naturally. You, you learn it. You pick it up like a sport or like a dance routine. You just you remember it and um, and you take it from there. Fantastic. Um, also, I, mean, I was looking around uh, on the internet today, obviously, um, doing, doing a bit of, re of research on you. I found the video still up on WWE.com of your, yeah. your entrance to the ring. And yeah. uh, Tony Chimmel, of course, making um, quite a big deal out of it, saying you've been practicing it all afternoon. Um, was, was that factual? You had been practicing that all afternoon? Yeah, Excellent. I had been. Because I was, I was fairly new, and I was one of the youngest girls that was a diva. And I sort of felt like... I needed to have a, a phenomenal ring entrance to measure up, and basically I got into the ring, I went out before all the other wrestlers were there, because all the wrestlers, you know, the guys get first dibs in the ring, they get out there and they start practicing, and the girls kind of come in later, and they're, they don't, you know, they have to make way for the guys, the guys are like the center of attention, you know, so I went out there way before the guys even came out, and I just started practicing all these different moves and stuff in Hiroko, and even The Undertaker 
um, he was kind of watching in the corner, and Hiroko was showing me different moves. And um, I, I said, I want it to be kind of gymnastics, dance, you know, flirty and fun. And so we worked out a whole routine, and then I practiced over and over and over. And uh, that was why they were, that's why Tony uh, made such a big deal about it, because I practiced it so many times. <laughs> and I was like, I would look over at The Undertaker, and just because he's been there for so long, I would kind of say, is this okay? Does this look okay? And he's like, listen, it looks great. If you feel comfortable with it, you got to go for it. And I was like, okay. You know, and he gave me the kind of nod of approval. And um, then Vince McMahon came out, and everyone kept joking around, like, you've got to watch Lauren. You've got to watch her ring entrance. You're going to love it. And he's like, all right, Miss Jones. He's like, let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did it for Vince McMahon, and then he came knocking on my dressing room door, like, later that day. And he's like, I need to see Lauren Jones. And, of course, all the other divas are like, Lauren, get out there. Vince wants to see you. And uh, he's like, look, I need you to go out, and you're going to do your ring entrance tonight in front of about 8,000 people. And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> wow. So. That's got to be scary. Did, um, is, are all the stories true about Vince? Is he, is he as intimidating as, um, as everyone makes out? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's pretty intimidating, definitely. He's, uh, he's just got this air about him when he walks in the room, everyone sort of shuts up, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can, I can definitely understand that. Okay, um, sticking with, with WWE just, uh, just for the time being, uh, who were your, your greatest influences while you are in the, the WWE um, locker room? I mean, obviously you mentioned Undertaker there and Hiroko and Rene Dupree took hand in your training. But um, who, who were your, your major influences when you were there? You know what? When I first got there, I had met Tori Wilson. She was one of the first people I met. Um, and, and I watched her career, and I thought she was really a nice person and stuff. But it wasn't until I met... Stacey Keebler, Christy Hemme, the winner of the two, uh, she won the Diva Contest, I think, the first year. Yeah. And uh, Trish Stratus. When I started meeting them, they were more serious about their career, and it was like, you know, Tori was beautiful and fun, and she was more of eye candy. She did wrestle, but it was when I met, like, Trish, who was, like, had, she just, there was, like, a sparkle in her eye, like, I want the title. Like, I want to keep the title. I want to wrestle. I want to really do this. And that really inspired me. So she was a, she was a big deal to me. You know, all the other girls, we talked, we hung out, we would go out for drinks, we would go dancing, like, we were friendly. But it was more like Trish Stratus, who was kind of distant from everyone because she was so focused on her career. And so she was a very big influence to me because she made me want to work hard and want to achieve, you know, high standards. So obviously, speaking about Trish, how do you feel about, obviously, the announcement that she retired? She had her last match last week at Unforgiven. Yeah, um, you know, when I heard that, I was shocked. Um, I wasn't expecting it at all. You know, um, rumors do fly, especially backstage um, with all the people and everyone talking. And uh, I was really shocked. But, you know, Trish, she's the kind of person, she'll probably have a comeback. And if not a comeback, she'll probably do a movie. I mean, you never know. Like, she's not the kind of woman who's just going to give up and throw her career away. So I anticipate her coming back to WWE um, or going on to make movies that are related to WWE. I, I don't see her career as being over. Yeah, absolutely. We, we touched briefly on um, the, the your influences whilst you're in WWE. Was there anyone that you didn't get along with while you were there? Let me think about that. I got along with everybody. I tried to make sure that I was on good terms with everybody because you don't want to have friction because you are traveling on with these people and you're on the road with them all the time. Yeah. Um, I guess there was sort of some girls kind of coupled up, like there were pa teens or pairs of girls, and um, Joy Giovanni and Amy Weber, they had a lot of friction, but at the same time, like, even though they had friction, they still were friends sometimes, and when they were friends, it was like, it was Joy and, Joy and uh, Amy against me and this girl Rochelle, yeah. and um, even though there was tension amongst the whole group, it would be them against us. You know what I mean? If there were ever an argument or if it ever came down to, like, who was right or who were fighting, um, we sort of teamed up like that. But in general, all the girls sort of kept to their own. Um, Amy and Joy Giovanni, I mean, they, they fought a lot. So there was a lot of tension between the two of them. But, I mean, it was, it was hard. There was tension among everyone because you're always competing. Everyone's competing for a title. Everyone's fighting. I mean, you have to remember, there is um, there's sort of, like, this... Everyone's sort of comrades. Everyone, you know, but at the same time, everyone is out for their own. Everyone's out for a title. So there's a lot of tension. There's always tension. Yeah, know? absolutely. <laughs>